I am supposed to remind you to think and turn on your brain and pay attention to subtle cues like what I am wearing, how I am speaking, the fact that I have worn glasses, the colors that I have chosen. Thank you to my wife for dressing me. <laughs> and then I will ask you, how does it make you feel? Awkward. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and in fact, the manner of speaking, the entire delivery, awkward. How many, by show of hands, would say that this would meet the expectation for somebody speaking on this red dot? Oh, lots of hands. <laughs> I want to introduce you to something that I call the think-feel conundrum. Now, again, audience participation by show of hands. How many people have ever had a time where they feel like their heart and their brain just couldn't agree? And I think, how many people can't raise their hand? All right, so we know this happens. The question is why. Before we get any further, I want to clarify something. We're going to talk about feel today. Feel is a vague enough term that it's important to identify because emotions are a form of feeling. But I'm talking about feeling like that gut feeling when you say, I just go with my gut. Because I don't want you to get the impression that emotions are somehow negative. Emotions are exceptionally valuable in how we process and interpret information and how we develop relationships with each other. So do keep that in the back of your mind. The vocabulary of the day, when you see feel, it means feeling with your gut, going with your gut. And there are plenty of times when our gut gets it wrong. The question is why? First, understand our brains. Were you aware that sitting between your ears is a supercomputer? If you measure the number of processes per second that the human brain is capable of managing, it is that of the most sophisticated supercomputer ever built. And the amazing piece of information is that that supercomputer will require enough energy to power approximately 1,000 households. And your brain does it on about 20 watts. The bar none superpower winner for processing per watt in the known universe capable of processing up to 10 quadrillion pieces of information per second. And that is actually the low estimate. And you know what that tells me? It means we're capable of making mistakes really fast. <laughs> I know because I'm guilty of them. Understand how your brain operates. With 10 quadrillion processes per second, it's not possible to be consciously aware of all of the data that we're managing. In fact, our, our conscious mind only manages about 5% of what we're doing. The subconscious mind takes over for the other 95%. And we're happy to have it do that. In fact, for everybody that just came here after lunch, we had a bunch of conversations going on simultaneously. How is it that you were able to listen to the person you were speaking with and filter everything else? You still heard it. If you actively turn the filter off, you hear all the conversations. And yet our brain is capable of zeroing in on the critical piece of information that we want at that time. The subconscious takes over. You don't even think about it. We process information on a number of levels. I will define them as mechanical, emotional, and intellectual. Mechanical is things that you can manipulate. Intellectual is things that you will process, addition, subtraction, so forth. And then emotional would be, again, those experiential things that we deal with. Most of us believe that we process data pretty well, right? You think, I need to make a decision. I will reasonably validate this data. I will come to a very accurate response. And because I'm so talented, I'll be right. What do we really do? We go right below the conscious line and our subconscious takes over and it does the heavy lifting for us and we shortcut the response. Now, the shortcuts are what's dangerous because we all know shortcuts are convenient, but sometimes they fool us. So I'm gonna ask the audience to participate in a couple of things. So while you are finding the handout, I'm gonna give you an example of something that your brain does automatically that you're very happy for. The first one is the Mexican dinner theory. Now, 
If you've ever been to a Mexican restaurant and ordered the burrito because burritos, <laughs> they always bring out the plate. And what does the waiter universally say? Careful because the plate is hot. hot. Thank you. I'm glad you nailed that one. And there are two kinds of people in the world. Person number one says, thank you. Person number two says, ooh, you're right. <laughs> Incidentally, the difference between wisdom and experience. <laughs> what happens when the person touches the plate? You immediately jerk your hand back before you even know it hurt. As soon as it's hot, you have a nerve impulse traveling at almost 400 feet per second, just shy of 300 miles per hour, traveling up to your mind, but before you even process it and send it back down, you've already pulled your hand away. It's a reflex response. It's a shortcut. It's for safety. Now, how many people have ever touched something cold and had the same reaction? Or my favorite, how many people have ever waded into the water at the beach and something brushed against your foot and you jumped a mile out of the water? When you're not expecting something, it's a safety mechanism. You look down and you realize it's nothing, but I overreacted. Our brains do that constantly. So this is the audience participation part. I want you to look in, I've given everybody a handout. For those of you watching online or on YouTube, we're going to do something clever. Stop watching that. We're going to look at this piece of paper and all I'm gonna do is on the right hand side, I'm gonna draw a quick X and you can do the same at home. Any sheet of paper will do. And then about five inches to the left of the X, draw a dot. Were you aware that you actually have a physical blind spot in your eyeball? It's where the nerves connect. You can't see it. But just like everybody's smartphone when you take a panoramic picture, your eyes take the information that's available to them and they fill in the blank so that you do not perceive it. But we're gonna find it together. Okay, so what you're gonna do first is let's take the paper, you're gonna hold it up, start by touching it to your nose, take your right eye and look at the X and close it, and then you're gonna pull it back, staring at the X. There's gonna be a point somewhere, and you're probably gonna wanna get it far, as far to the right as you can see, pull it in there, and that dot will disappear. Yeah, I'm sure a few people are getting it, right? It goes away. That's the part that your eye can't see. When you open the other eye, it reappears. Magic, right? It does it automatically. So we've done now, we've, we've seen that we have a reflex reaction. Our brain will interpret data for us automatically. Let's play another game. I'd like to do some math with everybody because we're all sharp, right? And math won't lie. So let's do this problem together real quickly. I have a baseball bat and a ball. The bat and the ball together cost $1.10. The bat costs a dollar more than the ball. How much does the bat cost? As quickly as possible. Okay, I heard a lot of answers. Who said, all right, how much does the, which one was which? How much does the bat cost? There were 10 cents, five, who said five cents? It's correct. It is correct. The bat costs a dollar more than the ball. Five cents and a dollar five together cost a dollar ten. Now be honest, how many got the math wrong? It's not because you don't know how to do math. It's because you take mental shortcuts. And we all do it. So what does this mean in real life? Well, first of all, it means we need to be aware of how we make decisions. Because I already talked to you about mechanical and now intellectual. What happens when we make emotional mistakes? It can be a disaster. Well, we could try to measure on a social scale and it'd be really difficult. So I'm gonna go back to something that I'm a little more familiar with. By trade, I work in the field of finance. So we track the numbers. And what we found is that investors consistently make mistakes. I know because I did this. In fact, I turned what could have been Eh, an in-state college fund for all four years into a couple of semesters. Yeah, so that is the voice of experience here, right? The question is, what do you learn? What we learned in general is that investors underperform their benchmarks consistently. 
on average. A company called Dalbar tracked this for over 20 years. And it's been a study that's been going on, rolling 20-year periods. The most recent data came at, the end, came at the end of 2016. But you can track this back for almost 30 years now. And the results were consistent. What happened? Well, investors consistently made this decision. Right about the time that you feel good, because the economic cycle is doing fine, is when everybody decided to buy, and then the markets promptly turned around and went down. And at first, everybody said, well, maybe it'll be OK, and then, oh, not so good. And then we do what we professionally call freak out. <laughs> and at that point, people would sell down here. Now, how do you make money as an investor? This is not a sophisticated question. You want to buy low and sell high. And what were people doing? The exact opposite. Now, did they mean to do this? No. Was it the wrong decision? Yes. Was it the normal decision? Absolutely. The question is why? Let's understand how we deal with decisions real quickly. First of all, when you are otherwise unstressed or maybe a little bit stressed but capable of managing it, you process information actively and above the line to make a decision. What happens when you get really stressed? You drop below the line and use shortcuts. And the problem with shortcuts is they sacrifice accuracy for speed. So if we are sacrificing accuracy for speed, we are now in the fight or flight response. It makes sense that we would make immediate reactions. And they are reactions, not responses to the data. Our subconscious is doing the heavy lifting. So no problem, right? We'll simply make sure that we are making conscious decisions. What happens when we find ourselves believing that we are making conscious decisions, but they are in fact being misinterpreted? Welcome to the data danger zone, where our emotions are filtering things and we are not actively aware of it. How do we do this and why? By show of hands, how many people believe that you are biased? I'm grateful that I'm seeing lots of hands because I got to tell you, if you didn't, I will introduce you to our first bias. It's called the blind spot. <laughs> We're all biased because our brains are constantly learning. When I started this talk, what did I use? Note cards. Every one of them, blank. It was simply to give you an incongruent data point. Your expectation was better. When you don't have the expectation met, you find yourself in a state of cognitive dissonance. And your brain is saying, well, where does the cognitive dissonance come from? It's all built upon previous experience. If you don't recognize that, you're staring at your blind spot, just like that eyeball. Now, there are lots of biases out there. We're just going to highlight a few that you need to be aware of. Nine out of 10 dentists agree this toothpaste is the best, right? Remember, that's the bandwagon effect, or what we would call consensus bias. And I think we can all agree <laughs> that the world used to be flat. <laughs> Nine out of 10 people would have told you the Earth was flat, just because the group thinks it doesn't make it right. Confirmation bias. You've had that argument on Facebook with your crazy cousin who believes the opposite of your political belief and springs all the data. And what do you do? You go out and bring a dozen other websites in that prove your point. Confirmation bias. You only look for the data that agrees with what you want to see. Overconfidence bias. I'm right because it's me. <laughs> How many people are above average drivers in this crowd? Right? If you're raising your hand, you might have an overconfidence bias. Somebody's below average. We can't all raise our hands. <laughs> and another favorite of mine, the halo effect. Business professionals, be wary. If you've ever been golfing with somebody and they're great at golf, and you believe that they're great at everything, that's the halo effect. It's also the idea that pretty people must be more talented. <laughs> it, maybe not. Probably not, I don't know. But I will tell you that that is a halo effect. So what do we do? Well, first, you gotta recognize when you're processing data that your subconscious wants to inform using your experiences. You have to actively reach below that line, pull it back up, and scrub the data. How? I'm gonna give you a very simple process. 
I'm going to divide data into two primary types, objective and subjective. Subjective data is easy. You get to measure it. Hot, cold, tall, short, all relative to your own perspective. Objective data, stuff that you measure with an independent source. And then tell me, are you actively processing that data or are you using your gut? Because when you're actively processing objective data, you're on pretty firm ground. We can call that stuff rock, metaphorically. Subjective data that we are processing actively and trying actively to get good decisions with. We'll call that dirt because it's still firm and it will brush off if we make a mistake. But it's not as firm as the rock, is it? Because it's subjective. But when you get below the line, we get into the caution zone and the danger zone. Objective data that we are using our gut on is where we get fooled. So be careful. Subjective data where we are using our gut is where we can get trapped. And I call this the quicksand, quicksand zone. And this is also the stuff you want to be careful of if you've ever had an episode of road rage or lashing out at your kids because you're mad, something like that. You are not processing the data. You are reacting to it. So be aware. Finally, why? Because when you are actively processing, you're engaged in the process. When you are not, you are much more easily manipulated. We live in a world where the media is busy selling you everything. Why? If you're not paying for the product, you are the product. So they editorialize the news to get below the line to attract your attention. Things like silly little shiny objects. Why would I point this out? Because it commands your attention. And every one of you picked up and engaged in the process with me. Why? As a credible source, you would simply follow me because I asked you to. So I will ask you in the future to do this when processing data. Slow it down. Scan it well. Slow down. Consciously analyze the data. Keep it above the line. Reach down to your self-conscious and yank it back up. So that at the end of this, I can tell you, when you turn on your brain and think and then scan the data, I can ask your gut with much better confidence, how does that make you feel? <laughs>